Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how do you create fancy looking buttons in Power BI. Let's start. All right, I'm in Power BI, and that's where I have created really simple three buttons. And if you take a look at the three buttons, page one, page two, and page three, there is nothing special that appears right off the screen. What will happen is that once I hover my mouse on top of the button, I'm going to get a little press down effect. Take a look. So if I hover my mouse on top of page one, it presses down a little bit. Page number two, the same thing happens. And page number three, the same thing happens. Now, this press down effect can appear really cool once you are designing some really catchy and attractive dashboards. We'll take a look at how can you have this press down effect on top of the button and actually also navigate the button to a different page or maybe activate a drill through or a bookmark or any of that stuff. All right, it's been a while that Microsoft introduced something called as buttons in Power BI. Now let's just take a look at where these buttons are and how can we make use of them. So in the insert tab on the right hand side, we have something called as buttons. In the buttons, I can actually go ahead and take a look at a blank button and a blank button gets created on my screen. Let's just increase the size of this particular button and try to make it fancy so that it starts to look something like this, right? So we have a blank button and as of now, I cannot write any text inside of this blank button unless and until I activate writing capabilities inside of that button. How do you do that? In the format button right here, I have something called as button text, which I'm actually going to activate and I can just turn it on. And now if I just open up uh, this option box, I can start to write the text here. Take a look, we have the default state. Default state simply means that once the button is appearing on the screen, nobody's clicking through it, nobody's hovering the mouse on top of that. How do you want the button to look like? I want a text maybe as page one to appear inside of that button. And the text is going to be, let's say about 12 in size. And that's the text that I get. Now that's the default text that I'm going to get once the, the button is appearing on the screen. But what about mouse hover? Because I took a look at my button and once I hover my mouse on top of that, I get this little change in the color, of course, and this press down effect as well. Now let's just see that. How can we create that press down effect? If I'm just going to click on that button, and I'm just going to go over to the button text right here. I'm going to change the default state to uh, on hover state. When I hover my mouse on top of the button, I sure enough want the same text to appear, but I want the font size to decrease so that it looks like it's been pressed down. So I maybe say that may come as nine as the font. Now, if I just maybe hover the mouse on top of that, you will see that it seems like a press down effect, right? The it's nothing but the font is actually decreasing in size and becoming as nine points or something. All right, this is cool. So I'm just going to click on the button once again, and I also want some other effects to happen. So uh, on the hover, I also want the color to change. So maybe I'll just make it as red and you can see that it starts to appear as red. This is good. And what I can also do is I can also change the um, outline. So right now the outline is maybe uh, three points. I can make it as a one point, but on the hover, the outline can be slightly thicker and also perhaps be red as well. And on the default state, this can be a little grayish outline as well. So you can see that uh, it becomes red and the button also starts to appear uh, red as well. And the outline is red as well. The other thing that I can do is I can also add some colors on the hover again. So if I just maybe click on the button, I can just go over to the fill right here and activate the fill. Of course, once I activate the fill, I get the same options. Once again, the default state and the hover state. If I actually maybe click on the default state, I want it to be white. Maybe I can just go to the hover and say that the color is going to be, let's say, light shade of red or perhaps even this one. And now if I hover my mouse on top of that, you can see that it actually presses down. It shows me the red font with a smaller size and a, a outline as well. Now, the last thing is that as of now, we're just creating a hover effect that we have been able to create, but we're not really linking the button to any action that we're trying to do. It's an action button. It should actually do an action, right? So if I just click on that button, we also get something like an action right here, which is actually turned off as of now. I can just turn it back on again and I can perform a particular action. This action could be uh, linking to a page, um, maybe activating a bookmark or even drill throughs and things like that. So if I just click on the action, I can just go over and click through a big bookmark, a drill through a page navigation, a QRA and a web URL. You can pick any of these actions and you can actually go and let's just say if, that if you want to go ahead and pick up a page navigation, click on the page navigation, pick up the destination of the page. As of now, I just have one page in my sheet. It's not going to show up anything, but if you have more pages, you can actually design a page navigation. All right. I'm just going to show you an example of how did I use this technique to design a recruitment dashboard, just a buy logo that I created, which is a plug and play dashboard. And that's where I have used this technique to navigate between the three pages that I have created. 
All right, currently I'm showing you the web version of recruitment data analysis dashboard that I created a few months ago. And that's where I have implemented the same technique of the press down effect of the buttons. Take a look, we have three pages. The page number one is positions data, interviews data, and the higher cost data. And if I do press down on the interviews data, I do get that press down effect of interviews and then higher cost of the higher cost button as well. Now, once I actually click on the interviews data, I am actually going to go to that page and take a look at the interviews and it does get bold and the other two will then have the press down effect. Now you can use these press down effects on multiple buttons to beef up the way your buttons look and to improve the general look and feel of your reports. All right, that was all about creating fancy buttons and a little press down effect that I wanted to speak about in this particular video. If you have any questions around this, please feel free to put down a comment and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, a quick shout about my DAX and my Power Query courses. If you're starting out with Power BI and you need uh, structured help with DAX or with Power Query to learn the fundamentals first and then proceed on to solving more complicated and more challenging problems, I will highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's gonna be highly beneficial. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers, bye.